G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So today is part two of the rear brake conversion. So this is all to set up that handbrake, pull it straight up on the lever, lock our handbrakes up, and it'll make a world of difference, especially trying to stop and leave it there on a hill. I asked Charlie, she's gonna come down and help us out with this. It's gonna be excellent. So let's get straight into this, put it all together. I'm just using a stripper disc. They are fantastic for ripping off all this paint and rust and muck. It's come up really, really clean actually. It's good. All right, so that will just go right there, just like that. Now we need to get that just there. Now it's gonna be pretty hard to try to hold that in place. So the cool thing is, we can use one of these awesome little magnets. We just jam the magnet exactly where we want everything to go, lock it into place, and everything holds together. How good is that? We can square it up, we can move our bits and pieces around so we can get them in exactly the right spots. I just use the mag switch to hold this bracket in place. It makes so much easier than trying to hold it with your fingers. Now clean those welded areas up with a wire brush. But as you guys know, this troopy is a bush ready troopy. So we're not going to go and wire wheel the entire rear axle. We're not going to give it a nice clean fresh paint job. Everything on this troopy is made to be solid, practical, and make it safer. Not to look bright and shiny and uh, blingy. So, but having said that, we do need to protect that bare steel. A little bit of uh, Galmax, straight on. It would look really nice if that whole rear diff was all cleaned up and painted a nice gloss black. I really have to fight the urge not to do it <laughs> anyway we save all that energy for the fire truck it is the mickey mouse original build sit it down the here we're going to replace all that Right, we've got some damaged studs in here when we pulled the hub off, or well, Charlie May pulled it all off. So while she's out there stripping it all apart, I'm gonna try to repair this, pack all the bearings, put all new bearings and seals on it. By the time I've done this, we'll be able to put it back on as Charlie keeps stripping the rest apart. So it's been a bit stubborn, so a bit of heat, hopefully it'll come off. We have given it a really good soaking with some R10, but it's still being very stubborn. Hopefully that heat just opens up the metal a little bit, does two things. Let's the R10 soak in a little bit deeper and just burns away any of the crud and loosens it up a bit. That was a battle getting that out. Righto, so there's our damaged one and it is absolutely mangled. The thread was destroyed, but it, we mangled it getting it off anyway. So luckily we've got a new one 60 series hub quick file up on the face make sure it's all clean no burrs no damage and so we put the gasket on and the axle in that we're not going to pinch that gasket or damage it keep all the oils and stuff we need in there okay bearings so we 
going to use some good Japanese bearings. We're going to pack them all with Molitac grease. I've showed you how to pack bearings before. All we're going to do is just put a big piece of grease on our palm and we're just going to keep packing the bearing, squeezing all that bearing grease up into the race. You can get bearing packing tools. It's not as fun as this, but. Right, a bit of a trick. We're going to cut a, we're going to cut a slit into the old bearing race. Then we can use this to get in our new bearing race. Make sure there's no burrs, give it a quick clean up with a file, take all those burrs off. Put our new bearing race in. So that's just sitting in there. Get our old one, we put a bit of split in. Quick little spray of our one. We've either a block that's the right size, or pin punch, and you're not going to damage your new bearing race. You'll know it's in because it won't go any further, but you'll actually hear the sound difference. Now, we just pull out our old bearing race, and our new bearing race is installed. Flip it over and do exactly the same thing on the other side. All right, the backside bearing does, uh, it's a little bit easier. You can slip it in here. And pop out the old one and we're ready to go. Make sure you're putting your bearing races in the correct way. So these are a taper bearing, so it's obviously facing up, so the bearing can drop straight into it. A pre-greased bearing that will drop straight into our hub. Now we're ready to put the seal over the top. Right, our brand new lip seal. A little bit of that grease, that Molotov grease. Doesn't hurt to put a tiny bit around the edge there. So we want to be pretty careful with our lip seals because it's only thin. It's only thin steel and our little rubber seal. We don't want to damage any of that. So we don't want to use a hammer or a pin punch or anything like that. Again, a nice big piece of nylon block, a dead blow hammer, and we'll tap that in place. Bearings, seal, it's all in, ready to go. We can put this back on the car. It's all coming together. Reload the bearing. That's it. Now, not too tight because we actually want to back it off a fraction. So we don't want it too tight, otherwise it'll lock our bearings up. But we don't want it too loose, otherwise it'll burn the bearings out. Right, so we're just checking to see which holes lined up. So Charlie's found out that these two do, so we can do them up now. Excellent. Thank you very much, Charlie. Right, uh, Charlie Mays had to go and um, she's left me to finish this off. So, uh, she's been an excellent help. Right, uh, she pretty much stripped both axles and the hubs, the whole lot down. She was stripping all that down while I was inside the shed rebuilding hubs and fixing up broken studs. So, fantastic help. Thank you very much, Charlie May. Right, uh, so gasket. Gasket sealant, as always, we'll just put a small little smidgen around. This just helps hold it all on as well as giving it a really good seal. Make sure we get everything lined up so we've got all the holes are in there. We've got one hole just on the side here that will line up with this pin just here. So let's carefully slide in our axle. Everything's back together again, thanks to Charlie May. Yes, these can be a bit tricky to get in we're going to line it up inside with our diff and line 
everything else up at the same time. And as I said, that, that went in um, super easy, so that's really good. Right, hey, so we've done all these up. Make sure you do them up like the same way you put a tire on, opposite nuts. Don't just work your way around, it's gonna go skew if. Okay, let's put the brake drum on. We've cleaned this up and made it look a little bit shiny. We won't do any brake adjustments or anything like that just yet. I need to finish the other side off, we'll wait till the wheels are on and then we can give it a spin and then we'll start adjusting the brakes. Traditionally, you adjust the brakes so they grab and then you back it off three clicks. Brand new brake cable. So this is the new brake cable that'll take us from drum on the back of your gearbox to handbrake on your rear end. <laughs> that just sounded so weird. Right, so we're just gonna squeeze this closed a little bit because this particular brand this clip is a lot thicker steel than normal, so it means that when we go to put our locking pin in, we can't get to the hole. So we just squeeze it in a little bit, we're gonna ditch that other little clip, just put that straight in, and then we'll be able to put that little R clip on. Holes that might be better. Right, -o, for all your kids playing at home, this bracket here is part of the 79 series. Now, if we get rid of that bracket, we should have taken it off before I put it on, but I didn't know, so I'm telling you guys now. We can use the existing brackets off the, uh, the 70 series or the uh, 60 series. They'll go straight onto there, they'll clamp onto that, and it'll make it so much neater. The trick will be for me. Get this bracket off. Right now we got that bracket off. Two seconds after I turn the camera off, we can clamp that straight onto there. Beautiful. But uh, using the original bracket that comes with the 79 series, we're going to bolt that straight onto the original bracket that comes off the 60 series. And that uh, will bolt on there, those little tabs will hold it in place, that'll actually work quite well. We've got this bracket here, more than likely we'll just make up a, we'll just make up a little bracket mounted up there that keeps the handbrake cable all neat and up and out of the way. Right, uh, now we've just got this little clamp in here as much as uh, as well as a whole lot of dirt and rubbish. Try to squeeze that clamp in and get this bracket off. All right, so we're just going to get our screwdriver in over that clamp. Try and pry it off. Yeah. As you can see, I was trying to squeeze these prongs down to get it out, but it was actually easier to it off. done the rear brake system is all set up straight over from 60 series all our handbrake cables are set up all our brakes are bled we've put a booster on there a proportional valve on there which we won't show until the next video we'll show how we did that 
Now all we've got to do is take it out for a test drive and see how it goes. Look at this. That's all handbrake and it's not going anywhere. Yes. How good is that? But right, again, so thank you so much for all your support. Really appreciate you guys tuning in and keeping up to date with what we're doing with the Troopy, the fire truck, and hopefully the LX. Well, probably not for a little while, but the LX eventually. And until next time, take care of yourselves.